order. Um, we'll do roll call. Older person, Decker. Here. Older person, Here. Ackley. Here. Older person, Donahue. Here. Older person, Feldy. Here. All right, we got everybody. For those in attendance, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Approval of the minutes from July 15th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. There's been a motion by Dean. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mary Lynn. Any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. All right. RO number 38-2021. Um, fire chief submitting uh, the fire department's quarterly report. Chief. Thank you. Uh, so some of the highlights from the uh, second quarter, uh, we had about an 8% uh, decrease in call volume, obviously, uh, due to our COVID uh, issues going on throughout the uh, country. Uh, our EMS calls were down by uh, 15%. And uh, surprisingly enough, though, uh, even though we had a decrease overall in our call volume, we were up 11% in our non-EMS related incidents from a year ago at this time. Uh, we had uh, our total fire loss volume, uh, our cost was roughly 4% uh, lower uh, than last year, which is good. Um, even though our, our fire losses, uh, the calls themselves were down 12%, 12 and a half percent. Uh, we did find a few uh, non-compliant uh, occupancies that didn't have working smoke detectors, so we replaced those and installed about 18 new smoke detectors during this period. One thing that uh, you'll notice uh, for pub public education events, uh, obviously with everything being closed during this period, we didn't do a lot of pub ed. However, um, we kind of made a, a you know, just a kind of a unique drive by uh, for birthdays, you know, when they, people would call and request it for the fire department, we'd drive by and, and uh, cause everybody was, you know, <laughs> confined to their homes and staying inside. So it was good for the kids. We did about 36 of those. Uh, again, it was just one of those temporary kind of things uh, because of the crisis, but if you have any, if you have any questions on the report, any questions for the fire chief? All right, seeing none. Is there a motion to accept the report? Motion to accept. Motion by Bob. Second. Second by Dean. Any further comments or questions for the chief? Seeing none. All those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you. 3.3 um, quarterly reports for the police department. Is someone on the PD on on the phone? Uh, Sergeant Yeager is here. All right, Sergeant Yeager, how's it going? Can you hear me all right? Yep, we got you. Okay. All right, so for uh, the first quarter here, um, some of the highlights are the part one crime. There's a reduction in violent crime uh, here to date in comparison to the same period in 2019. Um, and property crime remained flat. Uh, we didn't have much of a change there. Um, basically, our, our calls in general remained about the same. Uh, the most notable was our uh, reduction in traffic crashes, uh, likely due to people staying home and, and practicing uh, social distancing. Um, the traffic accidents year to date were at 611 versus 805 for last year. Um, and during the uh, period, the pandemic impacted all areas of our operation, but our community outreach has probably hit the hardest. Um, 
the department also spent a lot of time uh, during this period recruiting and evaluating uh, several candidates for uh, filling planned and unplanned vacancies. Um, that's really all I have for uh, for the first quarter here for uh, for the police department. If anybody has any questions? I'm here. Any questions for Sergeant Yeager? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to accept the report? Motion to accept. Motion by Barb. Second. Second by Dean. Any further comments or discussion on the uh, police department's report? All those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye, that's approved. All right. Uh, quarterly reports for building inspection, Chad? Thank you, Chair. So on the report, um, we're about 100,000 behind in revenues uh, where we were in 2019 of all the classifications, but um, we have a couple larger ones that we're waiting for coming in. So starting on September uh, 1st, the, uh, on the Oscar development, the $31 million apartments complex on the former Vandervart will be starting. We'll be starting to issue building permits for that project within the next couple of weeks. Um, so that should help our revenues substantially, and that's one of them that we had uh, budgeted. There's also some work out at Acuity um, that has some additional permitting coming. In. I think we lost Chad there. Chad, can you hear us? Okay. Um, I guess not really then. Okay. Um, that's discussion only, so we don't have to vote on anything in particular. So I guess we'll just move along. Um, city Attorney, Chuck? Yeah, so. I'm sorry. So I did uh, provide um, our report. Uh, you'll note that there's a couple of new uh, workload measurements that we've included on there. Um, but uh, if you have any questions about it, I can certainly answer them. All right. Any questions for Chuck? Seeing none, we'll move along. 3.5 general ordinance number 9-20-21, uh, amending the municipal code um, relating to classifications of licensing and registration fees. Um, we discussed this last week, I believe, or last meeting. Um, is, is Chad back on? Okay. Um, Barb, did, did you wanna um, chime in at all? I know that you uh, were um, doing some research on this and you had conversations with the city planner. You wanna add anything, Barb? Yes, um, I did talk to the city planner and the building inspector and um, told them what my concerns were and why I asked to have it um, uh, held over for a little bit of time so I could uh, get some more information. And um, they have assured me that they are not um, downgrading any of the, the carpenter contract um, criteria, what they're doing is they're creating a group for those people that may be retired contractors, um, carpenters, and um, according to the building inspector, they're looking at maybe seven or eight people. I can live with seven or eight people as long as they're not bringing down from the higher group to the lower group. Um, so. Uh, I did ask about, you know, how many people this, how many people we, we have as contractors right now. And um, I'll just keep an eye on it for another year and, you know, see if, um, if that number re remains small down there or um, what changes. So I, at this time, I'm okay with, with passing it on. Okay. Um, is there a, a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. All right, there's been a motion by Dean. And I'll second. And a second by Barb. Any further discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 
Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. All right, moving so on. Ryan, can you get a little closer to the microphone? Oh, yep. Is that better? Thank you. All right. Um, 3.6 RO number 25, 2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2020, April 14th, 2021, June 30th, 2021, June 30th, 2022 for beverage operating license. Renewal application number 7460. So um, I don't see officer post here. Uh, uh, Sergeant Yeager, is, was he going to be coming over or... Oh, he's in, in the background there? Oh, yeah, okay. There. I, I didn't realize we were going to do this remotely. Okay. Um, so uh, we do have uh, Ms. Garcia here. Um, you're Ms. Garcia, is that correct? Yes. Why don't you come up to the uh, podium up here, and the mic will be on for you. Uh, and this is somewhat of a formal hearing, and what's going to happen is uh, the police department's going to uh, present their uh, testimony first. You'll have the opportunity to uh, respond to that testimony or ask questions, uh, and then you'll have the opportunity to give any testimony that, that you'd like. Uh, uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure, uh, so you, you understand that this is a hearing on the, uh, uh, the non-renewal of your alcohol beverage license. You understand that? Yes. And you understand that the, the allegation basically is that you engaged in uh, activity uh, that uh, was illegal and led to uh, an allegation of a disorderly house at the place that you worked. Is that correct? Yes. And you're denying that allegation? I have a pending court case, so there's not a whole lot I can say because um, I'm retaining an attorney and anything I say here can be used against me in my criminal case. That is so, true. Um, so now you have a you have a couple of options. Uh, you certainly um, may choose not to testify today if that is your choice. Um, if you do that um, and there is a hearing, the committee can still make a decision based on the information that's presented by the police department. If you're concerned that that is a problem for you and that you want to be able to have you know, your opportunity to appear on the, the non-renewal of the license, this matter can be adjourned, but you're not going to have the license until you actually have the hearing. Do you understand that? Yes. Do and you I'm want currently to... not working because of it, because okay. they only have one bartender on at a time. Do you wish for the hearing to proceed today, despite the fact that you may not be able to answer all of the, the questions? Um, yes, all I can really say is I'm on bail and the judge could approve me working at the bar or not and he approved me. That's all I can say. Other okay. than that, I won't be answering any questions. Okay, Thanks. so we'll, we'll proceed with at least the, uh, um, we'll start with the pol police department side of things and you will have the opportunity to ask them questions in any case. So. Thank you. Chuck? Yes. Uh, Attorney Adam? Uh, Alder Donahue? Before we get, before we get started, um, is, is, is the pending charge a felony or a misdemeanor? Uh, it is charged as a misdemeanor. Um, I'm not sure Ms. Garcia understands that what she says in the courtroom, if I have it correct, I may not, but it could potentially be used against her uh, yeah. in any court proceeding. Yeah, that's what, that's what she, she did indicate that here, and you do understand that, that anything you say here today could be used against you in the court proceeding. You understand that? Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. And did she talk to her lawyer about doing this today? I'm actually in the process of retaining an attorney. Were you oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, mean, I you just want to make sure that she understands that if she says certain things here today, potentially those things could be brought up in court. Right. Yes, I know them. And so for that reason, she may not want to go ahead with the hearing, or she may. I mean, that would be perfectly fine, too. Right. Well, either way, I'm not working, so right now it doesn't make a difference. So, you know, you do, you can postpone the hearing today if you so choose. Um, and if you wish to just postpone it, 
two weeks to allow yourself to contact the attorney you're trying to retain, you can do that. Um, but we can also go ahead with the hearing today. That it's, it's really your choice. Um, it's totally up to you. I would like to go forward with it without saying anything because uh, for my attorney to come to this will also be additional money and my criminal case is gonna cost me plenty already. So if I understand it, what you're saying is you'd like to go ahead with the hearing today? Yes. Okay. Well, then just one final thing. If Ms. Garcia could get a little closer to the microphone. Yeah. Sorry. I'm having a little trouble hearing her. If that would be okay. Yep, sorry. Okay, uh, so then uh, if uh, the alders are ready to proceed, uh, we will uh, begin. If there's questions first, I'll, I'm looking to see if there's any response. Okay, so then uh, Officer Post, uh, uh, we, we need to have you sworn in. Are you prepared to sure. swear him in? Okay, Officer so if you Post, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. All right, please proceed. Okay, Officer Post, you are a City of Sheboygan police officer, is that correct? I am. So employed and on duty on March 7th, 2020 at about 1.37 a.m.? Correct. And uh, did you end up uh, responding to a tavern in the city of Sheboygan uh, on that uh, night at that time? Yes. Yeah. What tavern was that? Uh, it was Caddyshack located on South 13th Street in the city of Sheboygan. And that's 1502 South 13th Street in the city of Sheboygan, is that correct? I believe so. So uh, why don't you describe for us uh, what what happened as you initially arrived on scene? Uh, so other officers were sent before I was, uh, specifically um, Officer Barber. Uh, he was sent there for an anonymous complaint of uh, the bartender being, or needing assistance. Upon arriving, he located the door to the bar locked. However, he's able to see what he believed to be a bartender and two patrons inside. Uh, upon him and other officers trying to make contact, um, the individuals inside of the bar walked out of view uh, into an area later determined to be a bathroom. Um, due to that, additional officers were requested down there because we were not sure what was going on and uh, the legitimacy of whether or not the bartender there was actually in need. Uh, and the fact that they had walked away and refused to respond and communicate with officers uh, caused us concern that there was uh, something going on uh, that needed to be addressed or that people possibly needed assistance inside. So uh, prior to your arrival, were you aware at least of the nature of uh, the call at the tavern? Uh, yes, the, about the anonymous complaint about the bartender needing assistance and then uh, people being located inside but refusing to uh, make contact and eventually walking away from officers where they were no longer able to be viewed. And that information came to you, and I'm just gonna ask you because of the, um, because of, lim of the limitations of the, uh, the audio, if, if you can just slow down a little bit, in my, my elderly ears are <laughs> having a little difficulty hearing the audio. Um, so, so when you arrived, you had been provided that information uh, already uh, by the dispatch, is that correct? The anonymous uh, complaint information was provided by dispatch. However, the remainder of the information was provided by officers on scene about locating people inside and then walking into a, an area out of view was provided by officers as I was arriving. Okay. Uh, had you uh, previously, uh, were you familiar with this location? Had you previously responded there or been at this location? I have not. Okay. So, uh, so you get this information that, that there's at least uncooperative uh, folks inside. Did you know how many people at this point were inside? I believe Officer Barber had indicated that he had seen three. However, it was unknown if more people were inside. So uh, what happens next? Uh, additional officers, including myself, responded there. We continually tried to make contact at both the front and the back door, announcing ourselves and asking people to come to the door to let us in, 
or to just make us aware that they were there. Uh, we also sent officers down to the residence of the owners of the bar, as well as attempting phone contact and making contact with the apartment uh, renters, which are attached to the bar, all trying to determine what, if anything, was incur uh, occurring inside and if police assistance was needed. However, all those avenues were unsuccessful or did not provide any additional information. Were you and the other officers able to see inside the bar uh, at this time and, and determine whether uh, you know, the, whether the people inside the bar were patrons or employees or anything like that at this point? At this point, no. So what happens next? Uh, given uh, the unknown as to what was occurring inside, uh, we decided that there was exigent circumstance to start making our, our attempting entry into the business uh, to ensure that nobody was in danger and everyone was okay. We were able to uh, make way into the back hallway and into the basement area where we cleared that and didn't locate anyone. Um, as we were doing that, we located a ladder outside of the business and we were able to use that to get a view inside of the bar from uh, the east side through the large windows. And you were aware that this was a, a licensed premise that was open to the public, is that correct? Yes. So uh, when, when you're able to see into the bar uh, by the use of this ladder, uh, what did uh, you observe? I observed that there was a hallway about uh, the middle of the west side of the tavern. Uh, down the hallway, it appeared that there was a bathroom. I was able to observe a female uh, that was uh, appeared to be standing up in that area as I began knocking on the glass and shining my flashlight in as well as announcing. Uh, the female uh, laid down on the ground and tried to act like she was sleeping. There was another female that I had observed walk out of the room that was at the end of the hallway and then walk back in as I was announcing. Then, then what happens? Uh, we are eventually able to uh, get them to come out of the bathroom. At that point, uh, we identified that there were three people, two females and a male. Um, one of the females later uh, identified as the bartender, Stephanie Garcia, uh, began yelling and screaming at officers, uh, cursing, swearing, uh, as well as telling the two other patrons not to, or the two other individuals who were later determined to be patrons, uh, to not open the door despite us continually uh, pleading with them to simply let us in so we can ensure everyone was safe, uh, but she continued to direct them not to do so. Um, she then went behind the bar, uh, started smoking inside of the bar. Uh, she also began drinking directly out of bottles of liquor, as well as throwing property, as well as money uh, all over the place behind the bar from the, the cash register. Uh, she also turned up the music uh, to the point where she was trying to, or that we were being drowned out. Um, eventually, she came to the door and opened it, at which point we went inside. And again, she was still being disorderly, uh, throwing items. Uh, she at one point was on the phone saying that she's going to be arrested and she's going to leave or lose her license. Uh, doing, due to the way that she was acting, she was placed in a handcuff uh, and then it was made a, or a determination was made that she'd be arrested for disorderly conduct. So how was it that you were able to determine that she was the bartender on duty that evening? Uh, she identified herself that way. And how did you determine that the other two uh, parties were uh, patrons in the tavern? I believe they had spoken to another officer and advised that. Okay. Uh, in the course of the uh, uh, behavior that you've described by Ms. Garcia, um, did that have an impact on how, uh, on the behavior of the patrons? Uh, yeah, the patrons seem like they're going to cooperate and open the door uh, as we are trying to get them to come to the door and open it. Uh, I believe the, the female patron even had her hand on the lock, at which point Stephanie began yelling for her to not open the door, at which point uh, the patron apologized and said that she was told not to. Okay. 
uh, once you were able to get inside what was the, describe the scene inside the tavern, the results of the behavior that you uh, had seen. Uh, there was money all over the place uh, on the bar as well as behind the bar. I believe there's also uh, numerous personal property belonging to Stephanie um, that have been thrown about. Uh, about. Uh, additionally, as I said, she had been drinking directly out of alcohol bottles um, and then smoking as well behind the bar and inside the tavern, which was evident. Uh, additionally, while we completed a search or as we did our inspection, uh, after her arrest, we also located a marijuana pipe that was in the same bathroom that all three individuals have been located in uh, before they came out of it. Uh, so you did uh, then uh, place Ms. Garcia under arrest, is that correct? Yes. And you were able to, were you able to shut down the bar or what, what happened at this point given that she was the only employee on duty that you've identified? Uh, at that point, we are advised to complete an inspection of the bar <clears throat> based on what had, occur or, uh, had occurred. Uh, so then myself and I believe two or three other officers remained on scene and completed a tavern inspection. Okay. And once you completed that tavern inspection, w was there anything additional that, that you were able to determine as a result of that? No. And you were able to close up the bar and, and lock it up, is that correct? Yes, we were able to secure it. Um, and um, I, I wonder if uh, we can um, move the camera at least so that it that, that the it's visible to the podium. Officer uh, Post, are you able to see in the monitor the person who is standing at the uh, podium? I am. And uh, uh, can you identify who that person is? Uh, she's wearing a mask, but I believe it to be Stephanie Garcia. Okay. Um, I have uh, no further uh, questions uh, at this point. Um, Ms. Garcia, do you have any questions that you wish to ask of uh, Officer Post? No. <clears throat> uh, and so then uh, that's the... That's all of the city's case then, um, and so the city rests. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Garcia, do you uh, wish to provide any kind of testimony, either other persons to testify or you yourself? Um, no, I didn't know I could provide other people to testify for me, but um, either way, with my pending case, there's really not a whole lot I can do, so. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and so you, uh, uh, you rest your case at this point as well, is that fair yes. to say? All right, uh, so um, at this point, it's really up to uh, the alders uh, to make a determination. Uh, uh, the, you know, the recommendation of uh, the staff uh, is denial of the license based on uh, the, uh, you know, her failure to cooperate uh, with the police and her actions on that evening. Uh, I don't know, it, it, Ms. Garcia, do you want to give any statement, and you don't have to, as to why you believe that the um, the alders should take any particular action with regard to your license? Well, the, uh, the bar was not open when this all happened is one thing I'd like to say. The people that were in the bar were helping me clean up. But um, I don't know, really know what to say. Uh, I had my liquor license for quite a long time. I know I'm not a perfect person. Uh, I try to learn from my mistakes and it's a job and if you guys don't approve me, I gotta find a different job then I guess not a whole lot I can do. Okay. Are there any questions from any alders? Alder Donahue? Um, if I could just ask uh, Officer Post, um, was there a bar closing issue? Did the bar, was the bar supposed to have been closed at by 1.37? Uh, no, uh, I can't remember if it was a weekday or a weekend, but I believe uh, regardless it would have been two o'clock would have been the requirement. 
and, and you came because somebody complained that people, I, I, I think I missed that. You, you came or a number of officers came because there was a concern that people were in trouble inside the bar? Yes, our dispatch center had received an anonymous complaint that the bartender at Caddyshack was in need of assistance. Okay, and did you talk to Ms. Garcia that evening? Did she give any explanation for why she had such dramatic behavior? Uh, she did not, uh, to my recollection, provide a statement as to why she was acting that way. The only thing that she informed me was that uh, she believed that her sister was the one that had called uh, because uh, her sister was mad at her because she had kicked her out of the bar earlier the day and that was the reason why she had locked the door so her kiss her sister could not come back inside okay now you said you you were one of the officers personally saw her drinking from you know various bottles of alcohol yes i observed that okay and was Ms. Garcia like really drunk? Uh, during the booking process, she did consent to a preliminary breath test, which had a result of 0 0.103. Okay. When, when you came into the bar, did she seem to be intoxicated? If you know. She was, she was upset and acting. It could possibly be intoxicated. However, it could also be just being upset and frustrated and other emotions. Got it. Um, and this, uh, then, uh, Chair, if I can just ask um, Attorney Adams a question or two. Go for it. Um, or maybe Officer Post would be. Um, did she have prior disorderlies or um, other convictions um, that would bear on her ability to, to be a bartender? So uh, what I'll answer in that regard is that we are not making that allegation for the purposes of this hearing. We're relying solely on the okay, behavior in that we words, In other words, if I understand you, it was the behavior at the tavern that night that is the basis for the termination of the, or the non-renewal of the license? Right. Okay. And if we do that, uh, Chuck, if we non-renew, um, when can she reapply? Technically, she could reapply the next day. Um, typically, what happens in these cases uh, is um, th the committee will often recommend um, to uh, the applicant, you know, that perhaps they would like to come back after a certain amount of time, but they are not bound by that, nor are you bound to give her the license at that time. Okay. And, and you may not be able to answer this or may not be comfortable answering it. Um, I mean, clearly the behavior was disorderly, um, but clearly the tavern was locked. Um, so it wasn't part of the operations of being a bartender. If we were to determine not to renew the license, can you give me just kind of like a ballpark as to when you think... And, and again, I don't know her other her other record, but just assuming that this is the only thing we're talking about, um, say let's say after she gets the criminal charge uh, taken care of, would this be a likely case where you would uh, favorably? I'm not saying this very succinctly. Sorry, that you would consider um, uh, renewing the license if that's how she makes her living. Yeah, so based on, um, you know, how this committee has previously um, handled these situations, uh, I think it's fair to say, and I can only speak for myself as opposed to the other members of the, um, the staff group that meets to review these things, um, I would expect that um, staying out of trouble for, for a period of a year um, would, would, you know, make it such that the, the committee would, that the staff would recommend uh, granting a, a license application perhaps a year from now. And if, if, <laughs> if we were to um, 
let me just sketch out a scenario where uh, we determined that we would not renew the license, but we would urge your staff to consider, again, depending on the, the, the resolution of the criminal matter, say in six months. Yeah, we um, we would. Is that something the committee can suggest to you, or is that out of order? It is not out of order. Uh, we would certainly take that suggestion um, in bringing it to you. And realistically, anyone who applies, even if the committee, um, the staff group, um, were not to agree, they always have the ability to come to you. You, in the end, have that final decision in any case. And again, my concern is that uh, this was not activity while she was being a bartender. It, it was disorderly conduct after the bar was closed. And um, not good behavior, to be sure. Um, so, I mean, that's what I'm kind of noodling around as, as I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I'd be thinking here. I think so, that's a... Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a factual determination that you need to make based on the facts. I, you know... Um, I think there's probably multiple conclusions you can come to in that regard, but that's one of them. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I do. I do have a question, either for Officer Post or for City Attorney Adams. H have we had any other calls at uh, this location with for any other issues? Um. Or we have, but they, you know, not in the past year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That that at least that have led to the committee that the the staff committee having to review this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question. Go for um, it, Barbara. Attorney Adams. Um, you had asked uh, Ms. Garcia if um, she wanted to hold this over. Um, is there a length of time that she could request a, a holdover or? Could the committee request some kind of a holdover? Uh, I, I'm, along, I'm going along with um, Mary Lynn that, you know, it was not good behavior, but I think her behavior, um, whether she's a bartender or not, warrants um, she's an employee of that business, and I think the, the business owner needs to deal with that part of what she did in the business. Um, and I'm not saying that I don't also feel that the police have had the right, uh, they did have the right for the disorderly conduct, but again, it was after she was done working. So um, I'm kind of asking, is there a certain amount, length of time that we could look at a holdover? So the, the issue here is that this is, she does have an application um, and she has a right to the hearing and a determination. Uh, and we did ask her if she wanted to hold the hearing um, and we did hold the hearing today. So she does have a right for you to make a decision uh, today. Um, now, I think what's, what's tied up in it is the fact that this is a, um, this is just a non-renewal and she could apply for a new license at some later date. And so as Alder Donahue has indicated, um, it is certainly uh, within your uh, authority to, to basically provide guidance um, to both uh, Ms. Garcia and uh, to the staff committee that reviews these matters, uh, that you would be open to her applying for uh, and obtaining the license, you know, after whatever it is, six months, a year, whatever, whatever you choose, um, uh, that, that you would be open to considering that application at that time. Obviously, you can't bind anybody on that, and, the, and in the end, the committee will have that decision at the time that she makes that new application. Um, and she can, even if you recommend it, she can choose to make application earlier if she feels that that would be in her best interest. So, uh, Alder Feldy, I think, I think what Chuck is telling us is that we already asked if she wanted to delay the hearing and she said no. And we have the hearing. 
So from my perspective, it's probably our job to make a decision. Agreed. So, so if I can, I would move to deny Ms. Garcia's license, um, but to uh, indicate that um, staff should review any future applications. Um, well, I don't know quite how to word this. Um, that, that for, <laughs> Chuck, what I'm trying to get at is to put a timeline on here, and I don't think I can do that. Um, she has the ability to apply for the license whenever. Right. Um, and what I'm trying to say is that you folks should look on this favorably, all things being equal, you know, that there's not other stuff going on and so forth. Um, say within a three to six month period of time. Okay, so I think and that we don't know her. We don't know her prior record, right? And we shouldn't. I mean, that's you know, right. that's not for us to consider. But uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for being so uh, um, uh, not precise on this, but that's what I'm trying. To do. I, I think. I think. Um, what you're what you're doing and the appropriate way to handle that would be you you made the motion uh, to non-renew um, and then that would be the vote but then what we're hearing uh, both uh, uh, Ms. Garcia and um, uh, myself and the other representatives of the uh, staff committee that's assigned with these is that at least in in your case and the others alders can certainly chime in uh, that you would be inclined to uh, all, all else being equal uh, consider an application from her three to six months down the line should she stay out of trouble. So if Julie can put that into the form of a motion, that is what I so move. All right, there's been a motion. I would second that. There's been a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this motion? Um, yeah, I guess what, um, I guess my concern with you know, with like a three month, um, I, I would almost recommend it to be six because only the fact that, you know, we're, that, that's her word saying that the bar was closed. Um, if you had two patrons in there, that doesn't mean that there, you know, that there, there may not have been, you know, that, that it was considered open. Um, that's, that, that's her word saying that, that the bar was closed, not... You know that that wasn't. Uh, we, don't, we don't have the testimony of the uh, the bar owner or anything like that to, to say that the bar was closed. But that what that you know that it was under the and you know it could have been under the um, the um, where to say uh, under the duties of her while she was working as a bartender. Elder Donahue? Uh, Dean, I get your point. Um, I think what I'm trying to do is just make this a, a matter of flexibility that, um, I mean, we don't know, Ms. Garcia may wisely decide not to be a bartender. Um, or if she comes back after three months and there are a lot of issues, you know, she may not get her. So it's just a, this is just a guidance. Um, it doesn't say after three months she gets her license. It's just that after three months, uh, staff can consider her application. Right, and the and the the guidance would open to would, would be open to considering the application because she can apply anytime. Right. Yeah. All right. That's true. Yeah, the guidance won't actually be part of the motion. Um, but the guidance, you know, and, and the other alders thoughts on this is certainly appreciated because I think it'll be helpful both to the staff as well as to Ms. Garcia in, in, you know, making a determination as to what comes next. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of denying the motion or denying the um, application, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That application has been denied. Can I get my money back? I paid the whole amount. You only need to pay 17 to file. So the, the other 43 then? 
You, you don't because that those funds are actually what is expended in order to do the background check and all that stuff well, did happen. Actually, so. the application says it's seventeen dollars to do the background check. Because you only have to pay $17 to file and get the background check and get in front of the committee. And then when you pick up your license, you pay the other 43 for the total of $60. Right. That entire yeah. fee, though, goes so to it, those costs. I'm SOL because I paid it all at once. That's what you're telling me? No. But someone else could have got denied for $17, but I got to get denied for 60 uh, you actually, if you don't pay the entire fee, you can't get you can't no, get the license. No, the application. Am I right or am I wrong? Seventeen to file, sixty total. So you can pay seventeen to file and get in front of you. And when you get approved, you go downstairs and you come and pick it up, and my, then you pay the other forty-three. Correct. For my suggestion would my suggestion would be if you have any further questions, because that issue isn't in front of the committee, so they can't really deal with that. If you have further questions, you can either contact the clerk's office or my office after the meeting. What a rip off. All right, moving along. 3.7 RO number 39-2021, submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2020, June 30th, 2021, June 30th, 2022. So uh, I will divide this up uh, a little bit just because there's a number of different actions that we're taking. Uh, so first, we are recommending that the following uh, beverage oper operator license be held for investigation. Uh, it's Dylan Gilbertson. Is there such motion? So moved. Second. All right, motion by Mary Lynn, second by Betty. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of holding the license for investigation, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Uh, the, then we have a beverage operator license that we're recommending be granted, but the RO does need to be corrected. Uh, and that is for Joshi Bashudev. They just, the names were, his first and last names were reversed on the RO and we need to correct that. Mm -hmm. Motion to grant with the corrections. Motion to grant. There's a motion in a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. And then another beverage operator license we are recommending be granted with a warning to further to avoid further unlawful activity related to the licensed activity. Uh, this person has pending charges that we do not deem sufficient to deny, but uh, sufficient to be warned. And that is Emily P. Schmidt. Is there such motion? Motion. Motion by Barb. Second. Second by Dean. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We are recommending the following taxi cab driver's licenses be held for investigation. Uh, Eric Rowland and Jessica Shave. Is there a motion to hold for an investigation? Hold, motion to hold. to hold for investigation. Is there a second? Second. A motion by Dean, second by Barb. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of holding for an investigation, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's a, that one's held. And then we have one Class A beer license that uh, we're recommending be granted, but with corrections, and that's for Kasturi Marketing LLC, who needs to correct their premises description. <laughs> Is there a motion to grant with the corrections? Motion by Mary Lynn. Second. Second by Betty. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. And then the remainder of the licenses on the application should be approved. So moved. Second. All, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of granting the remaining licenses, please state aye. 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 Anyone, aye. Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. All right. Uh, 3.8 RO number 402021. 
There is just one item on this direct referral. We're recommending that the application be granted. Is there a motion to grant? Motion to grant. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed, chair votes aye. That has been granted. Next meeting, August 12th. Seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there such motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. There's been a motion and second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed, chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 4.50. Thank you, everybody.